Hey y'all, it's Mary, and today we are talking about how to share Premiere Pro projects between different devices using what I am calling the manual method. And I'm calling it the manual method because you can use this workflow that lets you share a project between two different devices to share a project between two different editors on two different devices. So you can use it for remote collaboration as opposed to using Premiere's built-in feature for remote collaboration, which is called Team Projects. But the difference between them is that Team Projects will let both of those editors edit a project at the same time, and this method will not. The other difference is the price because with this manual method, you can do this with any Adobe plan, but the team projects feature, that is only available with an upgraded Teams or Enterprise account with Adobe. And that is gonna cost you at least 400 bucks because there is a minimum commitment of a year and every collaborator on a team project needs to have this upgraded plan. And so that is the advantage of using this manual method, but it is messier and less convenient. And so it's gonna cost you time. All right, I'm gonna walk you through an example where I'm working on my desktop computer at home and then my laptop at the coffee shop. But if you wanna use this workflow for remote collaboration, then the steps are exactly the same. I'm also going to use proxy files. So if you haven't watched my video on proxies, then I would highly recommend watching that first. So what I'm about to say makes sense. Okay, we're gonna start at home on our desktop computer where I'm gonna set this project up. All right, so we're gonna make two folders for this project. The first is going to store all the small files that we wanna access when we're away from home. So this folder is going to go in the cloud and it's where we're gonna save our Premiere Pro project file and those small proxy files that we create. The second folder we're gonna make for this project is where we're gonna store all the big files that we're not gonna move around, they're just gonna be saved on our desktop computer or on an external hard drive. So we're gonna save the original video files from our camera here or any source footage that we recorded. And then we're also going to save our scratch disk files, those files that we root when we're doing our project settings. And if you don't know, scratch disks are spots on your computer or on your external hard drive where Premiere is saving some kind of big files that it's created to make your edit work. So let's say you have a clip on your timeline and you put a bunch of effects on it and you get that little red line above it and then you go up and you render that clip so that you get a green line and smooth playback. Well, Premiere, when you do that, is actually creating a preview video file and it's saving that on your scratch disks. Scratch disks are called this because they're periodically scratched or wiped clean because you don't need these preview files forever, right? And because these files can be really big, you don't wanna save them in the cloud, you want to save them on a hard drive. All right, now we're gonna transfer our video footage from our camera to the folder for our big files that we've got here on our external hard drive. Then we're gonna create our project in Premiere. And we're gonna save that file to the folder for our small files that we've got saved in the cloud. Now we're gonna go over to the Scratch Disk tab. We're gonna save those big files to the folder for our big files on our hard drive. And then in the Ingest tab, of course we're gonna create proxies and we're gonna use that H.264 preset which is gonna give us those tiny file sizes and we're gonna save those proxies in the folder for our small files that's gonna be on the cloud. All right, now we're done with our project settings. We're into our project and we're going to import all of our original full res source footage into our project here. And Adobe Media Encoder is gonna automatically launch. It's gonna start making those proxy files for us. And we're gonna wait until they are all encoded and until they all sync online so that we can access them on our laptop when we're away from home. All right, now that everything is ready, I'm going to close this project out on my desktop computer and I'm gonna head over to the coffee shop where I'm gonna do some editing on my laptop. All right, so now we're at the coffee shop and I am going to open up that project file that we saved in the cloud and I'm gonna open it in Premiere on my laptop. First thing I'm gonna see is this little pop-up about scratch disks. And I wanna make sure to save the location for those scratch disks somewhere on this laptop. Because remember, you don't want scratch disks saved in the cloud because they can be super big. That's not gonna mess up anything on the desktop computer. Premiere's gonna remember, all right, the scratch disks on the desktop are saved over here. Scratch disks on the laptop are saved over here because scratch disks are specific to every single device. Then Premiere is gonna give us a warning saying it's missing media for this project. And we already know that. We know that our source footage is saved on the desktop computer, so we're just gonna click 
offline all to tell Premiere, yeah, we know we're not connected to the source media. And here is the last pop-up we're gonna have to deal with before we can get into our project. And by the way, once we set up a project on both devices, we're not gonna have all these roadblocks every time. But anyway, this pop-up is about ingest settings. And our laptop is telling us it's missing a preset. It's missing that custom ingest preset that I have saved on my desktop computer. That's okay because I am not going to be ingesting any high resolution source footage while I'm at the coffee shop on my laptop. Plus, I want all of that high res source footage saved on one device where I'm going to export my final video. And so here Premiere has invited me to click okay if I want to turn off ingest, which I am going to do just to make things easy. All right, now that we're in our project, it's time to make our footage work. Right now we've got some question marks, so that's not good. So we're gonna select these clips and we're gonna right click them. And then we're going to select attach proxies because we wanna tell Premiere to use those proxy files while we're at the coffee shop and we don't have access to our original footage. So we're gonna tell Premiere where to find the proxy file for our first piece of footage. And that's a lot easier to do if you uncheck this media browser when you're looking for your files. That'll let you use your computer's operating system to find your files rather than Premiere's interface. Then we're gonna find that first proxy file and then Premiere should automatically link the rest of them because we've got them saved all in one folder. All right, now our footage should work just fine. We should be able to edit our heart out at the coffee shop. And you'll also see that this footage has an image overlay to let me know that these are proxy files so I don't accidentally export the project at the coffee shop. Anyway, after I am done editing at the coffee shop, I can save my changes, I can close my project, and I can bounce and I can head back home. Once I'm back at my crib, I can open this project back up on my desktop computer. Everything will still work fine. I don't have to mess with anything. Once the files are linked and set up, Premiere Pro should remember where they are for each separate device. You do wanna make sure though that you close the project on one device before you open it on another. Otherwise, you're gonna see this little PR lock file next to your project file, which is like back up off this project. It's locked right now and you can't come in. Now, if you're using this workflow for remote collaboration, then the steps are gonna be exactly the same, except instead of you working at another location, your teammate is going to be working at another location. So let's say you're working with another editor named Camila, and y'all have just finished filming a Kickstarter video. And after the shoot, both of you save all the video and audio files that you recorded to your individual devices because you're gonna be editing in different places. Then both of y'all are gonna go home and Camila's gonna start things off. So she's gonna start by creating that Premiere Pro project on her device because she's gonna kick things off by editing the A-roll. When she is done, she's going to share the project file with you by saving it somewhere in the cloud, like Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever. Then you're going to download it to your device, open up the project file in Premiere, and right away you're going to get that ugly red media offline message because Premiere's like, wait a second, where is Camila's hard drive? That's where I was finding all the project files to make this project work and I don't know where it is and I'm freaking out, right? And you're gonna be like, yo, chill. I'm gonna relink those files for you. Now you're gonna be able to find them on my hard drive over here. And of course, this is gonna be way easier if you have all the files for the project saved in one folder because Premiere's gonna find them like that. And if you and Camila have the files set up with the same structure on each of your devices. After you relink the files in this Kickstarter video project, then it's your turn to do some editing, right? So let's say you add B-roll, you make a fine cut, and you add a song to the video. Whenever you're done doing your thing, you're going to save the project file again in a location that Camila, your teammate, can access. So you save it back to Google Drive, Dropbox, whatever, but you're also going to save that new music file that you added to it. So she has that. Then she's going to open the project back up on her device and she should not have to relink all the files all over again. Premiere should remember where they are on her device, except she might need to tell Premiere where that new song file is. But Premiere might figure it out because if you and Camilla have the folders and the files structured the same on each of your devices, then Premiere is getting better and better at automatically finding your files, even if you don't tell it where it is. And so that is, that is just a beautiful, beautiful gift. Anyway, then Camila is going to finish your Kickstarter yeah. video. You're gonna put it online. You're gonna raise a bazillion dollars for your client, et cetera, et cetera. You do wanna make sure that only one person is editing that project at a time. And honestly, I would recommend whoever's editing the project that they just add their name to the end of the project file name so that there's no confusion. All right, lastly, I wanna tell you one other way you could use this workflow to collaborate with other editors remotely. So let's say you didn't want to take turns because you've got a deadline and you need to make this video right away. And you also didn't wanna spend the coins on team projects. So how would that work? 
Well, you could divide a video up into separate sequences that you each work on in your own individual Premiere Pro project, and then you can merge everything together later. So if this is a remote team that's making a wedding video, then Akila could edit the getting ready footage, Maurice could edit the ceremony footage, and then Joey could edit the reception footage. And when everybody's done, they can all send their projects to one person who can consolidate all the sequences into one project. Because remember, you can open multiple projects at once and you can copy and paste sequences between them. And that is what makes this collaboration workflow possible. All right, y'all, that is it for this video. If this video made your life a little bit easier, then I would love it if you let YouTube know that by giving this a like below. These lessons take a long time to produce and YouTube's algorithm does not always reward quality over quantity, and so it would really mean a lot to me. Also, this lesson is part of my course that teaches you how to make videos, and so if you're interested in learning more about that, you can head to marybetsy.com. Also, say hi to me in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And thank y'all so much for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.